Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending Saturday 13th, 2018. Yeah, I missed Friday the 13th by one day. It would have been kind of cool for the month of uh, Halloween to be in October. So what I want to do today for the TDD Report is go over some gadget tools too, but also talk about a few subjects too. There have been some things in the news and then uh, one question I was asked by a viewer to Navy Thomas specifically, but... Here's the gadgets, and then I will go over. Um, this is more or less just a, a rating here of, of some tools, and then here's some various gadgets, and I will show you in a few minutes. But first, let me talk about the question asked about the Large Hadron Collider. There's still these rumors going around that whatever next latest greatest experiment with the Large Hadron Collider might end up destroying the Earth or creating a black hole and sucking the solar system in or putting an end even to the universe. That is absolute nonsense. Yes, on tiny, tiny scales, it creates massive amounts of energy, but only on tiny, tiny scales. What's happening inside the Large Hadron Collider is way less than anything happening even in, uh, inside a major star. And we've got some things going on in our universe, like neutron stars colliding together, black holes colliding together, that the energies and the forces they produce uh, just naturally are way, way beyond anything the Large Hadron Collider could actually produce. And the scales are so tiny. I mean, here, here's something to think about, too, and this is a rough comparison. Think about if you took the head of a needle and heated it up to 3,000 degrees and then set it like in the middle of this garage here. It would eventually cool down, and between the time you brought it in here with the head of it at 3,000 degrees and the time it cooled down, if it was a cold day, it would probably not even warm this garage up one degree. In fact, unless you had a thermometer fairly close to it, you would not even be able to detect any difference. So huge amount of energy concentrated in a small area does not really create a lot of problems unless you're right there on top of it. I mean, obviously, if you put your finger on it when it was red hot, yeah, you would cause some problems. And uh, second up, I wanted to talk about the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. They're putting the Hubble Space Telescope in safe mode because one of the three gyros is giving them some problems. It's uh, some electrical noise, and they think if they put it in safe mode, they may be able to come up with a software fix to it. But it's not like some people are saying, well, the Hubble's at the end of its lifespan. Far from it. They can actually operate the Hubble te Space Telescope with one gyro if need be. Now it has less maneuverability. They can't do as many things as fast, but it's nowhere near the end of its lifespan. It just means that the movements and aiming will be a little bit slower and a little more limited, but they will still be able to do science experiments. In fact, one of the ideas they're thinking about is even though they have two gyroscopes that are perfectly good, if they're not able to repair the third gyroscope through software, they may just shut it down and shut down one of the other two so that they can operate it even in a limited mode but operate it longer because if one of the two other good gyroscopes goes bad, what they will do is take and shut it down and then turn on the other good gyroscope rather than running two of them at once and giving them more movement and more speed. Uh, what will happen, though, is both gyroscopes will age at about the same rate, and they may go bad at about the same rate. So saving one good one as a backup may actually extend it out many, many years. So that's what's happening with the Hubble Space Telescope. And I also wanted to touch on, too, a um, good thing to the uh, Soviet team for uh, the two astronauts coming down safely after he, uh, they said now they're thinking it's a booster separation, but they had some kind of flight problem that caused them to re-enter in a ballistic uh, trajectory. They also had to withstand some pretty good uh, G-forces, 6.7 Gs on the landing there, which still isn't really bad, and they're trained for doing this, too. A lot of the training... Oh, uh, got it. Hold on a second. I forgot to... Uh, interruption to the video. It'll stop beeping in a minute. It's just my automatic garage door closer, so it'll stop be beeping in a minute. But anyway... Back to the Russian space thing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, proving that the Russians have solved the problem, and it looks like with some of our new tests, too, we've solved the problems. Uh, if the tests keep working out for our new uh, space capsule, uh, uh, what is it called, the uh, Orion? Yeah, the Orion space capsule, we've tested it, too. So we may be able to do the same thing, too, and not have uh, so much risk as before. So space flight may become a whole heck of a lot safer. Um, not that it's ever going to be entirely safe. I mean, there's just so many, so many dangers and things that can happen when you're, um, you know, riding on top of uh, the equivalent of, you know, billions of sticks of dynamite right underneath you, pushing you up into orbit. So it's never going to be entirely safe. So anyway, let's get, let's get past that. I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave a couple of links there. To, um, some of you can just do a search yourself, like for the Large Hadron Collider and the conspiracy theories. You can do a search for that. But um, if I can find them, I'll put the links up to the uh, astronauts and the links up to the um, uh, Hubble Space Telescope gyroscope uh, problem and deal. So anyway, this is this first one is just kind of like a, a subjective 
uh, review. I uh, This is a 14 millimeter Craftsman wrench. I've had this one probably for over 10 years. It's a, uh, as you can see, maybe I can get a close up enough for you to see it. It's a, it's a 14 millimeter wrench if it'll focus on it, but I don't know if it will. Let's see if I can get it to focus on it on the cardboard here. Yeah, it's a standard 14 millimeter Craftsman wrench, forged in the USA. Yeah, let me turn it the right side up there. Okay, yeah, forged in the USA. Now notice this new one here, I got it replaced. I had another one that was damaged, and I had them replace it. No more forged in the USA. These are, although they don't say it specifically, they are made in China now. And if you can look at it and see, it's actually a little bit wider and quite a bit thicker too, significantly thicker. Now it could be just because of the finishing, whereas this one's kind of rounded over. This made in China one is just kind of squared off. And uh, it's got a little bit more meat on the, if you look at the ends of it here too, you might be able to see this made in China one's got a little bit more metal on it too. Now, it's not saying that necessarily the metal qualities are the same too. Maybe if the metal quality isn't quite up to the old standard like this, they had to put more material on it to give it the same amount of strength. Now, I'm certainly not going to because it's my personal wrench. I'm not going to test this to failure. And I'm sure if you search on YouTube hard enough, if it isn't out there now, somebody is actually going to do a test of the comparison of the old Craftsman wrenches um, actually working them to failure. Like, for example, put it on a put this one on something and actually have it to where um, the bolt won't give and it'll actually spread the two jaws open and see how it compares to this one here. But just to let you know, it's it's... It's quite noticeable the fit and finish on these. They're not bad. I wouldn't call it a bad fit and finish. But if you've got the old made in USA ones, the uh, polish, although I can't show you here, the polish is not quite up to standards on the new Chinese ones either. So that's what you're going to get now. They will still replace them for free. You take any of your wrenches there, even if they're purposefully damaged, they will 100% give you a replacement. I got this one at Ace Hardware. Uh, I think Lowe's, Ace Hardware, and whatever Sears stores are left. Um, they're talking about that they're going to declare bankruptcy this week, so who knows what Sears stores will be open. But if you find a place that carries Craftsman, they will still replace them. And uh, here's some gadgets, too. They happen to be all Craftsman gadgets, by the way. And this one here I bought. I think I, yeah, I think I bought this myself. I'm not sure. Some I was given as gifts, some I was bought. This is an automatic locking. Now if I can get it to open here. Yeah, i got a... This is an automatic locking, kind of like an auto lock uh, vice grip. In fact, it's even called auto lock. Um, it's still not really that automatic. You have an adjustment you have to do here too. If it's within certain ranges, you still have to adjust it a lot. And it doesn't really show it. It looks like it's rather large, but actually the effective range in the opening of the jaws is not very big. And as a matter of fact, if you want it to work right, you have to close it down about like this. So you have to have an object that'll fit in here, which is maybe, oh, between a half and three quarters of an inches. So. Uh, maybe two pieces of sheet metal or two pieces of not too thick metal or something like that you could use to lock together with it. But to me, it's not really that much more useful than a uh, small traditional vice grip. So I would have to say for whatever I paid for it, if I did pay for it, not really impressed with it. May end up giving it to somebody else that can use it or giving it to a charity shop or something. But uh, within a range of a specific use, if you had it for a specific use for especially clamping sheet metal pieces together or something small, when flat together, it would probably be fine, and it, especially because it releases quickly. But its uh, I still don't think it's any better than just your traditional uh, vice grips. Just the traditional vice grips is just as well. Now this one, this has a special end on it. Maybe you can see. Let me get it up here close enough to where you can see it. See, it's got that little notch in it there. And even though it's not going to focus... Maybe you can see it's still good enough, but it's got it's got this little notch in it. And let me actually see if I can do this and show you while holding the thing here. But what happens is you take a nut, and what it is is the nut actually fits in there and locks. And then what you do is you take the wrench and twist it around, and it'll flip off into that little notch. So it'll be like a quick release, one direction only, kind of like a ratcheting release. It'll lock the one way, but ratchet the other way. And, you know... As an idea, it is kind of a cool idea, and I had a complete set of these, too, and I ended up giving them to a charity shop. I just I couldn't find a consistent use for it. I mean, if you were in a tight area and you needed that ratchet action to where it would tighten the one way but slip off the other way, or you can flip it around and do the opposite, too, um, it's still just I haven't had enough chance to use it. So this one's a half inch, and I had a complete set that went up to, I think, from 7 16ths or maybe even 3 8 all the way up to 
five eighths, three quarters, something like that. I think it was a set of eight of them. And uh, yeah, this is the only one left. I, I don't know why I have an extra one that wasn't a part of the set because the set already had a half inch in it. And this one I just found in my toolbox, so I figured I would talk about that. But I decided for whatever reason to uh, get rid of the set because I um, just don't have a use for them enough. I mean, even this one here that I'm keeping... I still have not found that great of a use for it. I mean, if you're if you're in a tight, tight area to where you couldn't get one direction or the other close to something, it could do you some good. But, yeah, in all the 20 years I've had the other complete set, I don't think I've ever even taken all of them out of the uh, package. So I gave, them, I gave them away to a charity shop with the package and everything. And it... it uh, Let's see, my my next last one here, and I'm probably going to keep it. I still, I haven't really, I'd have to say, I threw it in my toolbox and haven't used it much, but it, it's a clever idea. It's kind of like an adjustable wrench, and what it does is it catches just the two ends of the nuts here, and I'll show you. Let me see. I think I think this is about the biggest size it'll go. Let me see if I can get it open enough to do that size with one hand and show you a little bit more. Okay. That's how it goes. It fits in there and it locks in pretty tight. I mean, and then you can adjust it and lock it even tighter. And you can go up, you know, you can go various sizes. You can go like this size right here is about, I don't know, half inch. I think this is half inch. This is a little bit bigger than half inch. Uh, can't quite do this one. I got this one to show you in a, let's see, maximum open size. It won't go up to here. And that's that's well over. I think that's well over an inch. I think that's inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So won't quite do that, but... It'll do a bunch of common sizes, and the only reason I haven't used it is I just threw it in the back of my toolbox. But I think pretty much, if you, especially if you don't have any uh, clearance problems or anything like that, if you have several sizes that you need to uh, hold in the back and stuff like that, it, it probably would work as well as a wrench. I'm still not totally convinced, though, that it's not just as easy just to get the two wrenches out and just swap between them. But uh, the other thing you could do, too, is just throw it in a car or a vehicle or something like that and have an adjustable wrench that will do a wide range of sizes. Because the other thing about it, too, is a lot of times you'll carry, like in a car, you'll carry American sizes, but the wrench or the, the bolt and the nut that you have to uh, work with is a metric size. Well, with this one, you don't really need to worry whether it's metric or, or regular size. It'll, it'll fit anything within a certain limited amount of range. So this might be something to fit in a... A vehicle or something like that or carry as an emergency backup if for some reason uh, especially when you work on projects and you set all your wrenches in one area and then you go to another area of the shop and so anyway that's an idea there this is the one I'm probably gonna keep the other ones probably gonna get rid of and then these this was just a comparison to kind of show you I actually have two of the uh, old style craftsmen made in the USA's and one of the new Chinese versions um, not saying as far as function it's going to be any worse than the others it may be every bit as good a quality as far as a functional wrench but I just noticed the uh, finish is not quite up to the standards I thought and it's it's noticeably heavier it's noticeably not as lightweight not as rounded not as polished so anyway hope this didn't go too long that was it for this week take care everybody I will catch you in two more weeks